All right, today we're going to talk about the best and the worst exercises for every body part. Don't waste your time doing some of these bad ones. Let's get into it. I like this. I just recently, um, I think I shared it with Dylan. I might have shared it with Doug, too. Uh, an episode that I saw that Mike Israel, which recently has been coming up in our feed a lot. He's like People, the bodybuilder scientist. Been blown yeah, yeah. Lately, I, I, yeah, we're definitely due for an interview and to hang out with him because I think it would I think it would be a great conversation and you know I've been seeing I like him. more of his stuff. Yeah. I like he did this episode. I, I I feel bad I can't shout out who the podcaster was. I didn't know who they were, but they interviewed him and basically did something similar. He ranked them a little bit different than what we did uh but same concept, going down and kind of giving. It was uh, interesting. Uh, I'd say ninety five percent of it, I was like a hundred percent in line with it. So I'm like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. He he's not a big fan of that. I like that. Well, you know, so. before we get into it, I, I think it's important uh, to understand. Remember, we trained lots of people for years and years and years, and most of the people that we trained were not bodybuilders or athletes; they were everyday people. And what you find is that every exercise that exists, given the right context, is a great exercise. Every exercise that exists, given the wrong context, is a terrible right. exercise. So although we're going to list best and worst, yeah. even the worst exercises, I can think of a scenario where that's a great I'll give you, movement. I'll give yeah. you a scenario so people understand where you're coming from there. Okay, uh, if I'm, I'm in bodybuilder mode. I'm training six, seven days. I'm inside the gym. Uh, I've already hit all my big compound lifts. I mean, I hit the the, the deadlifts, the overhead press, the right. inclined chest press. I've hit all my big movers. I'm pretty sore. I'm a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm going to the gym anyways, and I want to touch my shoulders and maybe touch like my chest. Okay, what I mean by that is I don't want. I've already done enough heavy volume or hard training for my chest and my shoulders this week, but I still want to go there and almost do like what we call trigger or focus sessions. Which here's an example of where I might do like a, you know, cable cable fly, and I might uh, do a front raise with dumbbells. I might do these exercises that I would consider way low because they don't do a lot of damage, yeah. but I still want to do a stimulus, and I want to do maybe something that's a little bit different than what I've been training. So in that context, that makes sense. So if someone, which I'm so glad you brought this up because it's this is YouTube for us. You know, heaven forbid somebody see me do something on YouTube that <laughs> is different than something they've heard me say a thousand times on the podcast. Or this shows up in our program in an obscure way, it's right. but, but it's really addressing one very specific thing. Right. It's, you know, just recently, I forgot to mention this to you guys on the, earlier today when we were doing the QA. Um I'm. You guys know on the this. I'm running um, the series. In the first month, I did like a map maps fifteen esque program and then i've now transitioned into this new kind of split that i wrote and every there's like a handful of people that's like i thought you said that full body is the best program and you've been saying that for five years like are you lying or what's it's just like in in the context of what i've been communicating right now this is what i currently am doing it doesn't mean that there's no value to splits at all yes full body i mm -hmm. think is still superior for 90 percent of the people it doesn't mean i don't move in and out of a full body routine every yeah. once in a while so context matters uh, context makes a big difference and some exercises um you know i do hit training sometimes yeah. whoa yeah. 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 and you know and uh, some exercises which are phenomenal for correctional exercise are also terrible for muscle building or performance and vice versa. So context makes a big difference. And some exercises uh, are rare, but have value um, in very specific ways. I'll give an example. A Jefferson curl. Okay. Ooh. If if you weren't well-versed in exercise and well-versed in maybe exercise history, understand the body. Yeah. If you saw anybody doing a Jefferson curl, you would immediately be like, oh my God, you're going to hurt yourself. Stop what you're doing. Don't do that. That's terrible. And literally it's, it's picking a bar up and putting it back down. In a rounded position. In, like where you're rounding your back all the way up and then coming all the in way down. A lot of times in a deficit. In a deficit. Now that exercise, if you have good control and stability, has a lot of application for certain uh, you know, scenarios. One of them being like Greco-Roman wrestlers. Greco wrestlers would do versions of this exercise, especially in the Soviet Union, because when you got a guy flattened out on the floor and you're trying to pick him up and to get him, you you have you get in this rounded position yeah. to lift. And so they would do this exercise 
to strengthen their backs in a very specific way. So it's just, again, yeah, another example. That, and we talked the other day about, like, neck training. It's yes. something I would never do with my clients, but, like, in sports-specific applications, like, you're going to need, like, support there, so you have to actually train it to strengthen it. Uh, so we're actually going to, like, put those types of exercises for neck training within the program. Yeah. So n now that we're almost done setting the table here, I think the, the biggest takeaway that I'm hearing is that the, there's, there's always ex 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 uh, exceptions to the rule. There's always an example where even what somebody else would say is a quote unquote bad exercise where it's not in a specific case or where the context where this matters. Now, I think the biggest, uh, most important takeaway from this episode that we'll do right now is I think if you are somebody who is trying to build the most muscle or get in the best shape and you are not doing the best ones that we list and be as yes. efficient as possible and you're yeah. doing more of or These, you're doing some of the ones that we would consider worse you are missing out you're yes. missing out on yes. the potential of building more muscle getting stronger getting fitter at a faster rate uh by if you were to be make sure you do it. so i think that's the most important thing if yeah. you check all the boxes and you're like oh yeah doing all those mm -hmm. then then it's it's a little less relevant that the, oh you might do an exercise here or there that we would consider less valuable this is for general overall fitness muscle building fat loss so that's how we're listing uh best and worst and in your routine if you're doing all these exercises the best exercises should definitely be prioritized over the worst ones so it's okay mm -hmm. to do all these in your routine but the best ones definitely be the ones that are the focus. Whereas these worst ones, if you have extra time, uh, maybe throw and them. And the, the reason why I think this is such a valuable conversation is because I'm very much so guilty of the first you know decade of my career, lifting career of doing a lot of these worthless exercises and not doing the big just ones. Just wasting time. Yeah. Just uh, you know choosing to skip uh, barbell back squats because I didn't feel like it and I did leg extensions and leg press instead. And so, and it's not that leg extension and leg press are bad. It's just that, man, what am I doing, doing that and not doing the barbell back squat? Hey, real quick, this episode is brought to you by Legion. These are some of the best supplements you'll find anywhere from muscle building or fat loss or athletic performance. Go through our link and get yourself a discount. All right, back to the show. So that's and that, that. We'll start there. Legs, uh, mm. best exercise: barbell squats. I yeah. think it. Uh, there isn't an exercise, yeah, that does uh, what the barbell back squat does, just in entirety. Again, there are other exercises that are better for other things, but for general muscle, general strength, general performance, a barbell back squat, a full barbell back squat. First of all, the range of motion is exceptional. So a leg press is a very short range of motion in comparison. Number two, it involves the entire body. Lots of strength and stability in the back and core and even the upper back are required to perform a barbell back squat very well, which is good because it's teaching your body to work together. And when you're moving in the real world and using your legs and lifting heavy, it also typically involves your upper body. It's almost never just your lower body. It also works the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, and even to a small degree, the calves because of the ankle uh, extension of flexion uh, when you go down and up. It's just an overall, you're going to get, this exercise will just do more than the next three or four exercises combined typically. And I think that's that matters too. The, and you said it, you set the table already by saying, um, you know, when we look at this, we look at it in, in the, from the lens of training a lot of normal people. And it's not just hypertrophy. It's also functional, building the most muscle, mm -hmm. overall joint health. Like what, it, what are my clients and the, the squat, it just, it hits all, it hits so many things and packs on so much muscle. It has to be uh, the king of the leg. They exercise. call it the king of all exercises, yeah, but I'll, I'll even say this. It's like, fundamental. A, a good example would be if you took somebody and had them add 50 pounds to their leg press, or you took that same person and had them add 50 pounds to their squat, very different, yeah. very different. The 50 pounds of leg press yeah, might be perceptible in terms of muscle. It's easy to do. 50 pounds on a squat, you, you can tell. Yeah. You can see it They're typically in the yeah. body. Um, now, worst exercise. It's got to be the adductor, abductor machines, the, yeah. the knees out, knees in machines. Now there's some potential value for correctional exercise or whatever. I would, I, I, although to that, I'd say there's better alternatives. Oh man. If that's taking up 10 to 15 minutes of your, your 50 minutes in the gym, <laughs> you're, you're wasting time. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's too many exercises that even like, even the cases, cause I've been in a debate with somebody about the value of these. And again, of mm -hmm. course you, you can find a reason I can find a reason to use it. 
but I would still make the case that if whatever that person made the, the argument that they made for it, I could say, well, I could think of another body weight or another exercise I would do that would uh, get the same results as what you're trying to get from that machine. So I 100% agree with this being one of the worst. Yeah. I mean, the only value I usually see from that is just to strengthen any kind of imbalance or, you know, correct. And, uh, you know, if it's some kind of rehab situation mm -hmm. or that, but, um, you know, in terms of like having a functional movement that covers the basis of those, like I'll rather yeah. do like laterals, uh, two lunges, walking. Yeah, and lateral two walking, two walking lateral launches, squats, like, uh, side planks with leg lifts, even. Side which, planks, I mean, like there's some stuff side you step could, ups. Like, yeah. And this, and you know, this is popular in the gyms because this is actually, I'll tell you what, you go to any gym, especially the big gyms, the big box gyms, you go to any gym, you will always find, always find. An adductor, an abductor machine. So adductor is the one that you push your knees in. Abductor yeah. is the one where you push Plus your knees Plus I don't like out. to make eye contact. With yeah. people I mean, days. I blame the thigh master on this one. Yeah. Just because the marketing on that was so strong. It's one of the most sold tools ever in fitness history. And it was it was sold to women that it would shape and sculpt your thighs. No. And so By the way, I still think that's carry Highest on. selling sure. piece of exercise equipment of all ever, time. Was ever, ever. And, and I do believe master. that that's the carryover. I think the carryover... Yeah of people that are still alive that got marketed to about the thigh master. Think of it as a bigger, better <laughs> thigh master. In spring. Yeah, I totally. Think, I think it goes beyond that. I think what it, it does is it, is it touches on the myth of spot reduction. That's why I think it's so popular uh, because people mm. still think that if they train an area that the body will lose fat from that area. So if I want leaner abs, I do ab exercise. If I want leaner legs, I do leg exercises. That's not where, uh, that's not how the body burns body fat. The body burns body fat systemically and it takes it from where you're genetically predisposed to take it from. So typically the first place you gain it is the last place that you lose it. So adductor, abductor, it's it was women that are like, oh, I want the outside and the inside of my legs yeah. to look yeah. more to, to have less body fat. To tone my thighs. It's yeah. and by the way, these are such tiny muscles that you're working yeah. that you could develop them, you wouldn't even notice. I mean, they're important muscles, don't get me wrong, they're important well, to stabilize the on track. You but know, especially like squatting. If, it's, I look at it as a supplemental to squat. If you want your legs to look more sculpted and shapely, okay, then do squats. It'll give you way more of that yeah. than an adductor, abductor machine yeah, ever yeah. will. And you could do that a million times more. And so it's it's totally one of the worst yeah, uh, pieces I of agree, equipment. I agree, I agree. All right, glutes. Uh, let's talk about glutes. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Do you want to improve your squat without injuries? Do you want to have a stronger squat? Do you want to have a deeper squat? We have a free how to squat like a pro guide. It's totally free and you can get it right now in it. We describe details, exercises, techniques, and ways you can improve your squat so that you start to squat like a pro. You can get it for free right now if you click on the link in the description below. Um, best, you know, squats are up there, but I would say hip thrusts, and I'll put hip thrusts higher than squats because of this. And now, we, we have studies now that show that barbell squats, barbell hip thrusts, both develop the glutes right around the same. Yet, why is it that the glute, you know, the the fitness professionals or influencers that are known for building glutes, like Brett Contreras, why are they why are they such big proponents of the hip thrust? I think it's because when someone has difficulty building their glutes, they probably have difficulty connecting to their glutes. Yes, and it's easier to connect your glutes with the hip in thrust general, in general. Yes, yeah. a hip thrust will connect you to your glutes, whereas a squat. Some people just have trouble with squats. Uh, you know, really building their. Glutes. I also see it as this is. Uh, there, I don't know too many people that build a routine around uh, building their legs or their butt and they uh, do hip thrusts, but they don't do squats. And if I did squats yeah. on Monday, there's a good chance by Wednesday or Thursday when I want to train my legs again, my quads still might be a little sore and I could handle... Because uh, hip thrusts, even though they're not technically in isolation exercise, they're more of an isolation yeah. exercise, and you could still load and it. And they really don't hard. damage your body like squats. Yes, yeah. and so it doesn't do as much to the body, and so I can easily where I might not be able to run back heavy barbell back squats again on Wednesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. I could load hip thrusts pretty good again, and so the combination of keeping squats and hip thrusts in there for the glutes. Yeah. It has to be one of the, the best combos. For yeah, because I was glutes. thinking about this because, again, like Brett Contreras, he, and you know, he's very honest with data. And he's like, well, the data shows squats and hip thrusts, you know, build the glutes about the same amount. But with people who have trouble feeling their glutes, I used to do this as a trainer. When I had a client who really had trouble feeling her glutes. You used to do four bridges her, before. Yeah. It was always bridges That's or hip thrusts, right? Yeah. It was it, bridge and hip thrust, same thing. It was always that to help have them feel it. So yep. I think that's why this is the best exercise for glutes. 
Um, all right, worst exercise, uh, cable kickback. Now, I know a lot of women do oh, these. Oh, yeah. It's great to add lots, to add extra volume, but really, is it doing much? No, I mean, no. not really. It's a light exercise. It's You might get a it's better like pump. It's stimulating, yeah, your group, yeah. but it really is it's not. A, it's a short range of building. motion. You can't load it very much. Mm -hmm. It's just- it, You can never do these- and you'd be totally fine. Hundred percent. You can ne if you hit squats and hip thrusts uh, and deadlifts and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but literally just squats and hip thrusts alone, <laughs> you're gonna build your butt. And then you would go down the list of you know lunges, Bulgarians, good mornings. I mean, there's so many other uh, RDLs. Like there's so many other movements that after you've checked the best two, I would go down before I ever even considered you know, getting my client on the cable kickbacks. This is a junk volume exercise. That's why I think you see mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, uh, so you'll see women in the gym do this, who maybe, you know, see other fitness influencers do it. But the fitness influencers who are really known for their, their, their full body development and glute development, they do these. Now, why do they do these? Because they work out a lot. Yeah. And they want to add extra volume. They just want volume. And they've done lots of hip thrusts and squats and deadlifts. Oh, I think and their body can't handle any more. I think it's because it looks sexy on Instagram. <laughs> that's why. I think it's an, I think thing. it's an excuse to shoot the camera right on your ass and then flex the butt. Yeah. And I think it's it, it does well on social media. That's not a and bad it's point. not uh, but as far as the value of the you exercise, the other reason why I think yeah. it why people are attracted to it, at least this was the feedback Slow from motion. my my female clients that love to do this exercise, is they feel it. And we, yeah. we, we mistake a lot of times like the, the burn, the, the burn, the burning sensation of a muscle as it's, it's working it really well, or you're building a lot of muscle there just because something burns a lot and you can feel it doesn't necessarily, it is building a lot of yeah. muscle there, especially when you compare it to things like hip I had, or barbell I had a squat. trainer once illustrate this really well. Cause a client was like showing them that they do this like arm circles every day. And they're like, but I feel it burn on my shoulders. She's like, yeah. yeah, you'll definitely feel that in your shoulders. When I get right. Burned. And right. it's like, that's true. Like you, you'll feel a muscle burn, but that doesn't mean you're effectively building it. It just means you, it burns and it hurts. All right. Next chest. Now this, this might be controversial, um, but I put, and I, I think you guys would agree with me from both a uh, aesthetic point of view, but also from a functional point of view, I know that bench press is supposed to be like the best exercise for chest, and it's definitely up there. It's definitely at the top. But I would say incline press, uh, I would put slightly above it. And, and there's two reasons. One, aesthetically speaking, when you build your upper chest, you have a nice balanced looking chest. When you build a chest just from bench press, sometimes you could develop this kind of like lower pec look where it doesn't look as aesthetic. And then from a functional standpoint, if you're pushing and needing the strength to push away, you're almost always leaning into what you're pushing. Incline probably has more carryover to the, to what you would need in performance than, let's say, a bench press, which is more leaning. Yeah, back. and it kind of helps set you up, I think, a little more effectively in terms of like getting those shoulders uh, pinned back, and, mm -hmm. and in terms of you know good form, I think it helps to kind of maintain that, and you could load it substantially just like you can. Uh, with the flat bench, but yeah, I mean it's kind of debatable, I guess, between the two of those. It's, but I do, I do kind of fluctuate between both. So there's, I mean, there's no argument for me. You know, I've been screaming this for a long time that this is my favorite uh, exercise to build the chest. The, there's also this too. You 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 brought up how we're also looking at this through the lens of being a personal trainer. Um, you've talked about before that you know part of the secret sauce of Maps Anabolic was your knowledge of. Most of the clients that would purchase this program would be female clients that avoided doing heavy lifting. Therefore, you put it in phase one. There's mm -hmm. nothing miraculous about phase one. You could technically start the program in phase three and work it backwards and get just as good of results. But you know that most people neglect yep. that five by five training. The same thing goes for incline chest presses, I feel, as a trainer. Many people uh, avoid it because they're weaker in it. And so they're avoiding an exercise that is one of, if not arguably, the best exercise mm -hmm. for your chest. So therefore, it wins even more for me because I, I know very few people that say I incline press more than I flat bench press. And if you're that person, you're missing out because I already think it's a superior movement anyways. Mm -hmm. It definitely is if you neglect it and you train more flat bench. And so for that reason alone, I think it wins because of that. Yeah. And you're and again from an aesthetic standpoint, um you'll develop a more bodybuilder looking chest with an incline uh, that we we will be flat. Now that being said, flat is right up there. I mean you could switch these and I'd be totally fine with that. You, you wouldn't hear me uh, complaining. 
All right, worst exercise, the Sven press. Where did that come from? Uh, you know, that? somebody Sven, somebody's last name was Sven, maybe. Is that yeah. where, is that is it, it named after be. somebody? It's such a weird exercise. I've, have you done it before? I've tried it a I few have. times. I you, have. So you take two dumbbells, you press them together. Press together. And so what you're or doing plates. with it. We used to do plates. You're, you're creating. You're maintaining contraction. You're there. creating inward tension and your elbows are apart at the bottom. And then because the pecs bring the humerus together, you're getting that. You're still getting a range of motion with the chest. I just don't. I, I you could do the same thing. It's like an isometric exercise pulling, more than, and, and, and yes. of course we yeah. know that isometrics have value. But boy, I would not put isometrics over a barbell. You know, bench press anything. Ooh. Oh, it's a f world's strongest man competitor, Sven Carlson. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna talk trash. To yeah, no, I mean, hey, listen, I'm sure this is why he was you know a strong man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. You just you got bored. And now I can this. see some value as a junk volume exercise, like you've done your presses, you've done your flies, you've thrown some cables in, you're, you know, 12 sets deep, hitting chest, you want to get a better pump, then you grab a pair of dumbbells or two plates and you squeeze out your chest and, you know, rep, rep out. Okay. I, I've seen people do this with a Smith machine from the side. I've seen people do with a plate and they're like- That's how I used yep. to do with plates. We, yeah. used, to, we used to smash like two five pound or 10 yeah. pound plates. I didn't know people used dumbbells. I, yeah. Again, so- yeah. yeah. I mean, this doesn't even come close. I mean, I can name 10 other real quick I chest exercises. You put you yeah. push ups, I Easy. feel like, are better. Yes. Yeah. Too many, there's too many exercises that are better. Um, for, and again, point of this is that. You know, if you're the if you're the kid or the guy who did chest this week and you did spin press and you didn't do incline barbell press, that's the point of this episode. It's like you definitely missed out. Now, yeah. if you were somebody who checked all the boxes and you had some extra time, you went to the gym on the sixth day and you did some spin presses because yeah. you didn't want to do any more damage to your chest. Look at your list and we're gonna get you to rearrange all this. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've done these when I've done a long workout for chest and I'm doing high volume and I'm like, you know, I'm toasted. But I just want to squeeze a little more blood in there. I want more, like the most intense pump. Then I'll go and I'll do something like this. And and th again, it's junk volume. It's not creating much damage. Not really sending much of a signal. I'd probably get yeah. the same effect by just squeezing my chest a bunch of times. Yeah, you know, totally. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that, that's that's why that's there. All right, back. I put two exercises for back because the back is interesting, right? You you you've got ex you've got the. The back's ability really, to pull it, you up. The truth then, is the back shouldn't be one muscle. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. We just know. said back. Oh, yeah. many yes. like what are we talking I, about? Mid, that's upper, what, lower? Well, that's why that makes yeah. this challenging yeah. and why there probably is going to be more than one exercise that somebody could easily make the case. That, yeah. I mean, I would actually put in there and it's not in there and it's w probably the most controversial one, which is deadlifts. Yeah. Deadlifts are not considered a, a back exercise, yet I think it's one of the most valuable things for people's back. Oh, yeah. And it always gets people up in arms online <laughs> that want to argue and debate that. It, you know, it, but Even it's though it never, builds and develops You your never back hear like that from somebody who's got a heavy deadlift that has, like, yeah. somebody who has built a heavy deadlift yeah. will always be like, oh my God, it built my back yeah, more than it's almost It's undeniable, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's, uh, and that's the proofs in the pudding in yeah. something like that. No, and that's I, a good point. That has to be there. But I, I put pull ups and barbell rows you know pull-ups are gonna hit the lats yep barbell rows are gonna hit more of the mid back so it's like your width versus thickness with yeah, body that's the one two punch right but there. that's i mean i literally if you just obviously deadlifts you got to do those uh but if you just did pull-ups and barbell rows i think you'd be fine i you would always be okay i think so too and I, i'll get your back in the sense that again looking through the lens of a trainer not just bodybuilder hypertrophy right bodybuilder hypertrophy guy I say, oh, I want the deadlifts in there. I want this other movement in there. But when I think about probably the most important exercise that I did with every single client was seated rows yep. or barbell rows. That's why yeah, a yeah. row. Yep. You just a row is Pull the such shoulders back. yeah, it's such an important exercise for everybody to get strong at just for overall function, overall health, and it's going to build muscle. It's just too important to not include that as one of the best exercises. Yeah. Worst uh, single arm cable rows. It's not a bad Ooh. exercise. I can no. see value in it. I just yeah. think there's so many other exercises. And again, when I see people doing these, it's either a trainer trying to teach connection, which is fine, or yeah. it's a bodybuilder and they're at, at the end of the workout and it's that junk volume, you know. That's how I used it. Yeah. So I used to do, I used to do them. Um, and I, if I were to do them, you'd catch me doing them now. It would be, you know, after I've already checked the other mm -hmm. eight exercises off, you know, that I have to do before, yeah. then it makes sense to me. It's tough. We were talking before we did the episode and we we're trying to think of a 
really shitty back yeah, exercise. There's, there's not many. There's not. I was actually, and then this is way too much in my world of functional world mm -hmm. where they're like, you could do like a, a rope pull and you yeah. could kind of do a drag. And I'm like, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of fun, but yeah. you know, not necessarily back targeted. No, but it is, but it's not. I it is, but it is, it's kind of, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, a uh, barbell row, excuse me, a dumbbell row. If you're going to do a single arm row, a dumbbell row is just way better. Oh, Way yeah. better than a cable row. Yeah. But if you're just trying to get a pump, you don't want to create much damage, you know, you at the end of the workout, hey, what what the hell, I'll throw in a few more sets of something, then, you know, go ahead and do this. But uh, otherwise, no, not really. Um, shoulders. All right, best has to be overhead press. I, yeah. I, I can't think of a better... Uh, way to standing develop standing. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. And I have full to, range. I have to, yeah. And full range. Yes. None all of this the way down, down to the bridge of your nose stuff, all the way down to your chest. And yes. go all the way up. Like it works the the delt. It works the, the stabilizers. It works the scapula. It gives the outward rotation of the scapula. You press Traps. it up over your head. Stable the upper back stabilization. Um, you will, this will give you good, strong, well-developed shoulders better than almost any other exercise. I mean, there, there's an argument. I mean, I'm going through this right now, right? Because of my chest, I had to uh, avoid it. Now I've told you guys, I can see the difference. I know my physique, but I've actually been really impressed with my ability to kind of keep my upper chest shoulder area like developed and not because I mean, to not, to not work your chest out directly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to build as much muscles yeah. I build is like, oh my God, am I going to be so off? But the fact that I've just, I've, con I've been hitting a lot of overhead presses is actually still maintained a, just an upper chest shoulder area. Yeah. That's decent. I can tell the difference because it's my physique, yeah. but that's how, what, what great carryover from that, the overhead press just does such a good job of developing the entire shoulder caps, the trap area, the upper chest area. It's just a great, great movement. Totally. And worst, uh, and some people might not like this, but front raises. You know, with the amount of available front delt exercises, everything from every press, right. not just the overhead press, but every every horizontal press, bench press, incline press, overhead press, it's all front delt. Yeah, any pressing, you're going to get the front delt. Yeah, I mean, why hit the front delts again if you're going to do, or with a raise, if and, you're going to do a raise, with, doing and with a with a lever that long. With yeah. that long of a lever, it, you can only do so much. You're yeah. limited by how much weight you can do. Yeah. Uh, and then even if you try and attempt to do it with really heavy weight, you're also going to arch the low well, back you know, and you swing and do all this other crap, you know? And it's, it's touchy too. If you like, if you overdevelop certain areas of the shoulder, you get into like impingement issues and tracking issues and things like that yep. too. So, you know, people get like, well, I'm strong here. So you're going to keep adding volume and where you're strong and then you're going to kind of uh, screw things it's up. It's just, if you're going to do some kind of a raise, uh, lateral raises, are, there's lots of value. Hitting the side delts or rear flies, even more value hitting the rear delts uh. because they don't get activated as much with all of the presses. But all the presses, so much of the stress goes to the front delt that adding another isolation front delt exercise doesn't make sense. Again, unless you can just add volume to your workout and yeah. you've done all the stuff and if you've got the volume left I'd, over and the extra pump, then yeah. I'd maybe. challenge people to add rotation in there as opposed to that, right? Totally. Because it's just so neglected. Or uh, rear delt stuff. Yeah, there's so many rear, rear delts, it's, it's the yeah, same thing. There's, I mean, there's too many things for the shoulder uh, that are valuable to... I can't tell you the last time I did a, a front delt race. And then uh, the point you made earlier, it's like this, some of these exercises, when we say worst, another way to measure is it the worst is like you could build the most amazing physique and never do and these. And never do them. And mm -hmm. never do yeah. that exercise. Like I just don't know anybody that could build the most amazing physique and never squat or never do a row. Like you, there's movements that you just need to do to build an, an impressive, great, strong, functional physique. Uh, these are ones that's just like you could do yeah. without that exercise. All right, biceps. Uh, best, I put dumbbell curls. I like dumbbell curls better than barbell curls, although I love barbell curls. I think they're right up there. I like the dumbbells because they allow the supination. Um, so that's where you turn your, your hand as you curl because that also is an action of the biceps is the supinating. So I think that it, it fully develops the bicep. Uh, it's it, You can go heavy with them. It'll give you great, great arms. You probably never need to do another you know, bicep exercise again if you just did those. Yeah, I, I agree. I yeah. think the reason why it beats out the barbell too is the barbell ends up hitting your thighs. And so a lot of times you don't even get that really good full extension. Yeah. When the dumbbells are my size, I can all open all the way up and take that full range of motion. So I would say that the dumbbells yeah. uh, uh, beat that for sure. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Real quick, MAPS Resistance and MAPS OCR for this month are 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link below.
All right, back to the show. Now, worst, this was easy, was a standing front double bicep curl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the one where it's my favorite bodybuilder. They'll grab, yeah, the cables. <laughs> from the, 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 it's like they're doing a front double bicep well, this was, Yeah, this was my favorite to do to show off my arms at the end of the <laughs> That's workout. That's 100% why they exist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why people me. do them. Yes. It's yes. like me. Yes. The <laughs> argument now, I could see a bodybuilder's argument. So I, I used to have a, a trainer that worked for me. I was a bodybuilder, and he did them. And I'm like, That's kind of a waste of time. And he goes, Well, you're right. However, I'm practicing flexing yeah. in this position because that's how I present myself yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah. That's how I'd argue. Aha. Uh -huh. Now that makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. he would do it like pretending like he was get, doing a, a back double bicep. Then he would do it like he was doing a front double bicep yeah. and just work the bicep while maintaining tension everywhere. So like what about the, the prison curl or what's that one called where you're like here? That's a concentration curl. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. not bad. You don't like, you like those? <laughs> I, I, I feel like those are funny. No, 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 are that's just a personal all thing. Right. Uh, Triceps, uh, close grip bench press, uh, oh, yeah. although dips, you know, body weight dips has got to be up there. Just a, it, you can go heavy with this. It really develops the triceps exceptionally well, gives you good. I'm glad you chose this one strength. because, again, um, I'm reminded of like the, and, and again, this could just be my own personal experience, although mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen this a lot with clients. is it's an exercise that I didn't. I don't think enough people do it. How often? I don't see a lot. I don't walk in Isn't a gym. Isn't that funny? There's exercises. One of the best exercises. Yeah, when you think about exercises that are valuable, like and, and I do feel it's been nice to see this transition in the gym, right? That we've moved away from not deadlifting and squatting. That I can't go in the gym and not see someone deadlifting yeah. and squatting, right? You go in any public gym, you will 100% see a deadlifter and a squatter and an overhead press probably happening at least once inside right. the gym. But I could easily go to the gym and not see a single close grip bench press. And yet it's the most valuable tricep exercise. So I, one of, if you would argue dips would be the other one. Um, I love this movement. It was one of the tricep exercises that I neglected for a long time. Once I already, for, finally started using them, it for sure built my triceps more than anything else. Yeah. When I, uh, this, I could tell a difference in the size of my triceps by doing this and not doing it. Just this exercise alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and this was, I, you know, I got good at these uh, as a 19 year old, when I really started to implement these and not only that, but it, it added strength to my, all my other presses. Yeah. I could bench press more, I could overhead press more. You could more load substantial amounts. Yeah. And that's really where you took off for me for sure. A lot of times that's the limiting factor on someone's bench press is yeah. then in an in, in inability to lock out Yep. Yeah. and, and the tricep strength that it mm -hmm. takes to lock out a bench press. And so they've got the, the strength to get it off the first like four to six inches off the chest, but then they can't get it locked out. And then doing that close grip trains that, which then carries over to the chest too. So such a great exercise. Yeah. Worst, uh, now a uh, little, little debate here. I put reverse grip press downs. Yeah. I, I think I press mean. downs are great. To reverse your hands and grab the bar does nothing different to the triceps. <laughs> yeah, except for make it harder to hold the, the bar. Yes, the tricep <laughs> is not involved in any of rotation it it whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. All it does is make it so now it's harder for you to hold onto the bar. Yeah. Now, some people are like, I feel it more in my triceps. Probably because you're squishing your arm into your side more, mm. but it changes zero activation of the triceps. It's just a waste. It's a waste of time. That's why I put that Yeah, up. I made the debate uh, dumbbell kickbacks. See, dumbbell like, kickbacks I'm are kind trash. I'm on that team. Yeah, yeah dumbbell yeah. kickbacks are trash. Cable kickbacks, not so bad. Uh, dumbbell kickbacks are just, I mean, the... Well, it's just awkward, and you got to kind of hold your arm up in that isometric kind of position. I mean, that's why it's so good. You only get about 15 degrees of activity. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's about this much activity. It's right a minimal here. movement. It yeah. very quickly turns into a swing. Or yeah, something. I mean, when, yeah. You, when you think about uh, the importance of taking a muscle through full range of motion, tension on the muscle the entire time. Now, in a cable, you different. You can do that because resistance yes, is at the bottom. Exactly. With a cable, it, it takes keeps that, that resistance the entire way through that movement but with a dumbbell even with your elbow you're only getting that when the full extension and super the, partial range yeah, yeah and yeah. then you swing most away so yeah i would i would make the case that it that's i mean those are close one and two for worst tricep exercises for sure you now we have some questions doug yeah we do uh the first one is when should we include the worst exercises you know for most people never uh yeah. unless you're at the point where you have a lot of volume in your training you can handle a lot of volume you're a fanatic you've been working out for a while everything looks good you want to add some more time in the gym but you know that adding some of those best exercises is going to be too much on your body well, then you can throw some of these in there, get a little extra pump. And yeah, the way I, I would describe that is like the way we wrote Maps Aesthetic. If you're familiar with Maps Aesthetic, it's like you have the three foundational days and then you have these focus days. It would be somebody putting this like on a focus day. It's yeah. like I yeah. on the on the foundational moderate intensity. Yeah, on the foundational days, I'm checking the box on all the best exercises. All the best exercises are going to be included in my my the bulk of my training. 
And then, oh, I have these other two or three days I come to the gym where I do some machine work. I'm not trying to really go hard, just trying to add volume. Okay, here's where I start to include some of these quote unquote worse exercises. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other place would be if there's any correctional exercise purpose. Sure. For them, I can't think of a lot of uh, correctional exercise reasons for a lot of these exercises, but some of them, right? Some of them. If I have, for example, uh, a person uh, has a shoulder injury and they're unable to stabilize their, their humerus in this back position, I may have them hold it there while trying to do a tricep exercise. I'm just trying to create a scenario. Um, abductor, adductor. I've had yeah. scenarios where- I've used it for rehab. Yeah, rehab type of stuff. But So correctional exercise would be the other place. Is the ability to create a pump valuable? Yes. Yeah. I, okay, so this I love this question. You know, one, a, a great way, not the only way, okay, so this isn't foolproof, but a great way to identify your ability to connect to a yep. particular muscle with an exercise is how easily it gives you a pump mm -hmm. in the target muscle. And I would do this with clients too. When a client said to me, you know, wow, when I do that, when I get really tight in my whatever, hamstring, my glute, my, then I knew we're connecting. We're connecting to that muscle this for you is a good exercise to get us to connect. So I, and I personally, when I work out, if I use a machine or do an exercise and I get a pump real easy yeah. in the target muscle, I'm probably going to do more of that because I think it's more valuable. Makes you look bigger on the podcast. It's Thanks. <laughs> you know, that's great. What are the best rep ranges? All of them. Yeah. All of them. They all build muscle. Or They're the all one you, you never do. I mean, that's yeah. uh, my, typically the way I answer that question is I always flip it back on the client who's asking that question. And I say, tell me what you've been doing for the last three months, six months, whatever. Typically, there's always a rep range somewhere in there that someone's neglected. Yeah. Sometimes that's the extreme range where you're all up to 20 reps. Sometimes it's the other extreme going down to singles, doubles, and triples. Most people tend to hover in the five to 15 rep range, which of course is the, the bulk of most of your training should probably be. But definitely on those end ranges, there's tremendous value, especially when you never do them. Yeah. And I mean, uh, when I trained everyday people, the last, and most of my clients were everyday people, the last, I'd say 10 years of my career, I saw so much value in teaching them how to do sets of one, two, and three reps. Absolutely. I mean, these were everyday, you know, engineers, moms, dads. They're, they're not going to think to do it unless, yeah, they're, they're under that And because they never did, yeah. the yes. gains they got yes. were ridiculous. Exactly. Like, I'd, you know, I'd have Mrs. Johnson who works out with me, you know, once or twice a week, and I'd start training her to teach her how to do singles and doubles, and her body would just react and respond. I also think, favorite tools. I also found that there was like this kind of empowering thing too, like, because if you lift five, there's a big difference between a weight you can move five plus times to a weight you only have to move once or twice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can normally load it's that bar significantly more. Yeah. And it's, when you take a client who's never done that, I remember when I went to They've this never point. learned how to summon strength. Yes. Yeah. And then it get, builds this new confidence totally. of how to do that. And then they take the way they learn to do that with singles, doubles, and triples. Now apply it to their five by five or 10 rep training. And yeah. all of a sudden you see significant it's strength. It's gridded out even it more. It was a trip yeah. to me to realize uh, that people are afraid to fully exert themselves. Yes. So when you teach them how to do it, they're like, oh my God. Yes. And you're going to be okay. Totally. Yeah. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher.